Hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. I had to adjust my audio. Oops. Sorry about the double play. And one of those mornings, I know I woke up in a bunk this morning, but I got all of my blocks except for two, the two that I'm going to sew with you today done for this week. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. Um, again, this is what we're working on, which is the beautiful butterfly two. And I'm using the Tula Pink fabrics because I actually got the kit a while ago. And today we're doing what they call the chunky crosses. All right. Teeny, teeny. The small crosses. There's so many colors. I actually redid these today because I did the wrong orange on the side. Didn't notice it until I was all done. So I used this one, which we used in the previous blocks, and I should have used this one. Oh, well. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready? 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 Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, you're having fun doing this. And you're learning from my mistakes. I hope you guys start posting some of your blocks. Even if you're not using the kit, you know, I'd love to see the fabrics that you did pick. It's a fun quilt. It's going to be a beautiful quilt no matter what fabrics you picked. Doesn't have to be rainbow either. I mean, you can do a bunch of different blues or teals or reds or whatever. Purple, la purple and lavenders. I mean, it'll be beautiful no matter what you pick. Honest, I know that. Um, okay. I'm not going to wait too long because the video will be on the Facebook group and it'll be going on YouTube. And if you haven't seen my channel, I've already put the first week's video up there and we're going to make its own playlist for this. All right, let's get sewing. Um, okay. We've got a lot of little things to do and Got a two, two, we're working with two fabrics. Okay. One fabric and two fabrics. So all the blocks are two fabrics, and you're going to make two blocks of each set. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my rectangle and put the smaller rectangles on each side. Is it still rainy up there in New England? I know the last few weekends, you guys have gotten a lot of rain. And I think I saw something about a water spout in Kingston or Narragansett or... No, it's not raining. Well, that's good. And don't mind the little extra paint I have left on my fingers, people, because I painted my door a couple of coats last week, my front door, and I haven't didn't wasn't so good about getting all of my paint off. We've got cooler. I'm going to say cold weather because we'll have highs in the seventies but it'll be cooler, which is nice. I'm looking forward to some evenings with a little bit cooler weather. It's not, I wouldn't say it's our winter. Because um, winter can get pretty cold for a few days around here. Literally a couple of days, not... Oh yeah, I've been working my butt off, <laughs> Rose. 
I feel like it's all I've been doing. I don't know if I'm getting anywhere, but I'm definitely working. But um, there's usually a couple of days around here in the winter, not too long, where it can get down to the 30s. So 50s for me is like, hallelujah. I'm like, yeah, I want that cooler weather. <laughs> what are you working on, Rose? Anything fun? Or half pumpkins? <laughs> See, I don't know. I mean, I wake up in the dark already. Wake up in the dark, you know. Well, I'll, at least a few nights in the week, I come home in the dark. Shops open so late. So, you know, this one doesn't bother me. It's a spring change that kills me. Ah, yeah, I know when you have finished that one either. <laughs> I got to get something done, though, because there's so many quilts I have planned. Right now, besides this one, you know, I'm working on Jubilation. Plus, I'm doing two different colorways of Amanda Murphy's Bloom with using Frolic. I want to do a video of quilting on that. Get It's always something. It's never a nice enough time in the day. Okay. Now we've got these two done. You're only going to do the two short sides on each. We're going to put those aside for now. And now, I'm going to take the other two fabrics out of the same size and sew those together. Now, as I told you last week, don't freak out if your quarter inch isn't perfect, okay? The key here is to be consistent with your seam allowance. So if you're consistently, like me, a lot of the times I find I'm an eighth of an inch off consistently, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to unstitch everything because it's very consistent for me. So I don't think I've seen that one. Um, I'll have to go and look, Rose. October 31st mystery. Hmm. She means she. See, that's how much I've been paying attention. I've just been. Ah, uh, okay. I didn't even see that. I've just been going. Crazy. So much going on. Trying to keep up sometimes is just impossible. I'll have to look at it, see what I can pull together. So now. We've sewed these together, and I'm working on two blocks at the same time. We're going to iron these, and it really does not matter too much what side you iron them on. So I am keeping my dot up top and setting my seam so the seam allowance will go stay on the dot side.
Yeah, for black, for her usual mystery quilt. It's usually Black Friday. Because I always get my the chips and pull fabric in the shop. Paint chips. I always love her stuff, but there's so much. I mean, it always comes out beautiful, but she has so much little piecing. I like little piecing. Not when you're doing the same thing a hundred times. <laughs> So this is little piecing, but it's not as bad, in my opinion. You're not doing 50 blocks, same thing. But I do love Bonnie Hunter's designs. She's probably be one of the few scrappy quilters that I can get behind. I'm not a scrappy quilter. All right, now that we've got those ironed, we're going to take our little squares and we're going to put one square on each side of each side of here. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know. I woke up this morning really, really tired and just not with it today. Oh, after. This video, I think I'm going to do some ju more jubilation. I already have some, the next set of blocks cut for that. And then at the shop while I'm there, I'm working on, like I said, the balloon. And I've got, because I'm doing two colorways, two quilt tops, one that I'm going to quilt myself. First, and then I'm going to show you on the other one how to do it. Um, right now I have a hundred, no, I don't know, 96 flying geese for each quilt top I'm working on. So I have those in the shop in between working on machines and everything else. And I just got finished doing my four order I think of patches for Boeing, Artemis, Rockets, all of that. Flying geese are not bad. Yeah, I know you have a lot of my stuff because you like me. I have a ton of stuff. I have a ton of kits too, but don't have the time to get it all done. Heck, I had to make this so along just so I could put this quilt together because I really wanted to. So I'm not even going to iron these yet. I'm going to go right into putting the block on the other side. There is just way too much for me to do. I've already got three more quilts, I think, in in line that I want to do like this. One is that, um, what is it? Glimmering Glee or something like that. Flying geese are not bad. They're actually pretty easy, I think. I'm really loving jubilation. But when you add all these quilts on top of painting the house and countertops, and I'm even looking into possibly doing new floors in my house. There's just not enough for me to go around. Okay. So now we have our little sides. 
and I just iron these out. So I start with it down, set the seam, put the iron on it real quick, and then just go over one side, the other side, and stretch. And these are small pieces, just like with Bonnie Hunter's quilt. Um, and that means starch is your friend. So I use the best press, which is a starch alternative. It will really make a difference when you're piecing. It'll save you a lot of headache. Expert. I'm not an expert quilter. I never claim to be an expert. Ever. I am far from expert. I call myself the queen of fudge. I like easy. I like doing things easy. I like it when it looks hard, but it's really not. And flying geese are not hard, especially if you use the wing clipper from Studio 180. Because guess what? Make them a little bit bigger and cut them down. You never lose your points. Hand. Now that, you're probably a hundred times better than I am. I hate hand quilting. I don't do anything by hand. How's your babies and not the chickens? I mean, the dogs. Lobo's going for his first visit with my vet tomorrow. Dr. B. I think he's got worms. So I'm going to bring a sample from his check. I mean, he is like a bottomless pit when it comes to food, and I can't see him gaining any weight whatsoever. So we'll find out tomorrow. He's got a few um, shots that he needs. Do the three year rabies test. Just had the year, um, his year's rabies test is due this month. So I'm going to go for three years. Yeah, he plays a lot, but it's crazy. I, re I mean, he's really skinny, really skinny. Okay. We have our two pieces, and now we're just going to sew these on each side, just like this. So the dot side goes to the dot side, or dark side, whichever fabric you're using. The seams are not going to match on purpose. That's what makes it a chunky... Um, See, we've got one seam over here, one seam over here. So they're not going to match up, but your sides should match up. And you can pin if you want, if you feel more comfortable. There's a lot of things I just don't pin. All right, I'm not going to iron this yet. What I'm going to do is I'm the other side on first because the seam is not anywhere near the edge of the other fabric we put down. So these go pretty fast, especially, I mean, it's like. Any oops, it came out. It's like anything else. Um, cutting takes a while, and it takes a little while to figure out what you need to cut. But if you cut each set of blocks, 
before, you know, you don't have to cut everything at once. I have a tendency to cut just each set of blocks that we're going to do at one at a time, then sew them, and then get ready to cut the next one. All right, and the last bit of sewing. If you guys have any questions at all, just post them, and I'll be happy to help you. Um, I think it was, was it Phyllis that had a question about cutting? So before I uh, end today, I'm going to do a quick demo on how I cut fabric. And hopefully it will help you. I set my seam and just gonna iron it. All right, so almost done, and then I'll show you how I cut the fabric. Probably a good refresher for beginners. In my shop, I tell everybody we've got three rules. Not allowed to cut yourself. Not allowed to hurt yourself. If you cut yourself, bleed on the floor, bleed on your pants, but do not bleed on your fabric. That's a big no-no. Uh, all right, one more to iron, and then we'll do a quick demo on cutting fabric. All right, well, you go head to dinner and have some fun. Thanks for visiting, Rose. All right, here's my two blocks. I'll square them up a little bit, but I don't, if they're anything like the others, I haven't had to square them up much, much at all. So we've got this color. We should have 10 blocks on all, two of five different color combinations. This one, this one, nice purple. And the orange. And I'll take pictures of these for you and post them. And let's cut some fabric. How's that? Um, I think I have anything I need to cut right this minute. So I'm just going to get something. Okay, give me a second. All right, let's try this. I'm glad you do learn things, Rose. That's a good thing. Okay, 
you have the fabric as it comes off of the fold. Okay, up here. And here's your salvage. Traditionally, I just fold it up so I have a smaller piece to cut. Now, there's a couple of ways to, to cut fabric. And this ruler is going to be huge. You can cut fa fabric just using your ruler. So, for instance, if I needed a two and a half inch strip, I could put the edge of my fabric, the edge of the ruler right here and have one, two, two and a half cuts, two and a half inches and cut it like that. Okay. Or you can use the mat and the ruler at the same time. And that's how I have a tendency to cut. And this ruler is really big. Just give me a second to move a couple of things. Okay. All right. So if I wanted to cut a two and a half inch strip, I try to make sure that the edge of my fabric is on this straight line. And I wanna start with a clean edge. Since I need a half inch, I'm gonna put the half inch mark here so that when I cut to trim everything up and have a straight edge, I already have a half inch ready. The key is do not cut past your fingertips. So if my hand is here and I've got my pinky or another finger off of the ruler to act as a, a stop, I'm gonna cut until about here and then stop and gently lift my hand put it over here before I go again because if you try to do it in one stroke the ruler is just going to keep on moving to the side and you're going to keep on getting an angle cut just go slow as slow as you can go or as slow as you need to go keep your hand here way out of the way thumb is tucked in so you know, I've seen these rulers actually, I mean, the rotary cut is actually jump a ruler and can go up here. So I try to keep my thumbs out of the way. I'm going to start off of the fabric. Let me bring it up just a little bit so you can see. So we've got it on the straight edge here. And for now, we're going to put it Right on the whole number first. I got my hand, a couple of fingers off to stop the ruler from moving. My thumb in. I'm going to start off the fabric and cut down. I'm going to stop very gently without moving the ruler. Move my hand up. And then cut. There you go. Now, if I want two and a half, we got one, two, and three. So if we put the half inch mark on the third inch line all the way up, that gives me one, two, and a half. And again, go and put my hand here, keeping my thumb in. At a minimum, I've got at least my pinky off. Stop. Move my hand, stop, move my hand, and there you go, a two and a half inch strip. It's not hard, it just takes some practice. All right, you have to practice, but you have to do it safely. I also recommend for most beginners to be on a lower table so you can be above it when you cut. It'll give you more leverage, um, a little bit easier. So you don't have as much, you know, if you're trying to do it like this, it's a lot harder. If you're doing it standing up and down, pushing down, much easier. I hope that helps. Forget who it was, whether that was looking for cutting all right if you guys have any questions um any problems 
let me know. And I'm dying to see what fabric you guys have picked, especially if you haven't um, gotten the kit. Because I think it's going to be beautiful no matter what fabric you pick. When I need the half inch, let's see. If I wanted a two and a half inch strip, okay, and the fabric was like this. You got one, two, here's your third inch line. So I put the half inch line from the ruler on the third inch line and line it up all the way up so that when I cut, you have, whoops, when I cut it, then you get one, two and a half inch. Hopefully that makes sense, Rose. Let me know if you have any other questions, but I know somebody else had posted that they were having troubles. It's not difficult, just take some practice. That's all you can do. And once you find, the only other thing I can tell you that I recommend when I'm teaching my beginners is whichever method you use, whether you use just the ruler to cut or the ruler in the mat, use the same method to cut throughout an entire quilt. If you don't, you could be a hair off here or there if you switch back and forth between methods and that could change your sizing. But it's just gonna take practice and being very slow in the beginning because we don't want anybody to get hurt. Let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, you can post your questions and I will do everything possible to give you some sort of an answer. And I wanna see your fabric, I wanna see your blocks. So if you are still in the long, please post. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And I'm going to sew some jubilations. Then I got to cut more fabric for next week's blocks. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Bye. Bye, Rose.